Right. Uh, so, uh, so I would like to talk about the uh, spectral statistical random matrices and random graphs. And uh, uh, I, this, uh, uh, I think this, this was uh, probably not complete, but uh, I would like to thank all of them who, uh, who has done so much uh, on these uh, topics. And uh, uh, you will see that I will try to give precise uh, citation as much as possible in the talk. And so these are most of my students or postdocs and some collaborators. Right. So uh, and this uh, this outline of the these three lectures. So this uh, this lecture was prepared for the for the general audience. And so so if they are, I'm pretty sure there's there are experts here, and you probably would be a bit bored. I'm sorry about that. So um, so I would like to talk about only the most basic concept. Uh, in this area, because there are, there are various results, people still ask me that uh, what's the current status, and so so I would like to go back to the most basic thing. So the I would like to start with uh, introduce weakness divisions and uh, his, the history and uh, well, I go back to statistics, and then we will we will, uh, I will say what is the sparse models and the random regular graphs. And then we go to the beyond mean field with the quantum chaos and when ensuring equation. So this was more or less just, just set up the, the problems. And then, then there's the main result. This main result is uh, the main result of all three, uh, three topics. And at the end, I'll talk about general strategy of the proofs. And so this, besides the, the statement of main results, so probably you see, you've seen some of this in uh, my other talks. And the second talk will be mostly concentrate on the dynamical ideas and uh, about this metric Brownian motion and uh, this random spectral dynamics. Uh, but, if, but for all of this, the first thing should be done is about green function estimates. And then we will talk about tangent flow of Dyson's Brownian motion. And then, uh, then next, uh, then we'll talk about this eigenvector moment flow. And this eigenmoment moment flow will be, we will use the Nash's ideas and the, actually it's a Stein's idea uh, together with Nash's idea can be applied to this uh, eigenvector flow. And then uh, the last talk about the quantum diffusion of random band matrices. And uh, uh, this I will start with the, uh, talk about this uh, quantum diffusions uh, for the random Schrodinger the operator just introduce the phenomena. And then we we'll talk about quantum diffusion for band, uh, band matrices, and then the method. Uh, the method is actually quite different from all our uh, previous talks. And then we will talk about why the QUE are important and why the universality, uh, how they connect it. And then last is the summary of the part. So this is the outline. Okay. So I start with uh, um, now the first thing is uh, this this week. Uh, so we the Gaussian orthogonal ensembles. Uh, the standard one is the, then uh, uh, each each metric element is is Gaussian with uh, with a standard variance one over n with mean zeros, and uh, it's a symmetric and it's called the Gaussian orthogonal ensembles. And then you can also define the GUE and the GSE and um, this unitary ensemble is is for com complex emission case. A practical one, which is uh, uh, in the application, it uses quite a bit less. And then there's also a definition called a Wigner ensemble. It just uh, change every metric element. Uh, uh, in, so it just remove the Gaussian conditions. And otherwise, it's about the, it's the same. There was also a lot, this, uh, this, this, uh, there's another type of uh, product ensemble called uh, uh, this uh, invariant ensemble. But this is, uh, this is the product. Uh, e to the minus beta H, and this H is a log gas, and it's log gas or eigenvalue. So this is really, uh, this, this really, um, it's really a model of eigenvalues of the of the metric. It's not, uh, it's not. So it's a bit quite, it's quite different from the from this metric model because you don't you don't have to solve the uh, this this eigenvalue equations. And the next one, uh, so there's some adjacency matrices. Of the random graphs and three probabilities and so on. And, and recently, there are a lot of applications about in high dimensional statistics 
and you try to solve this equation y equal to ax plus b and with noise and all kinds of conditions. And then you get sample coherence matrix. You can even look at the, if you want to be fancy, you can look at this artificial neural network. It's, uh, it's also, it's an iteration of a nonlinear uh, non matrix of this form. There are various questions one can ask. All right, so this was the, um, and then uh, you've probably seen this before, the, the beginner has, uh, was faced with this problem of this spectral statistics, and he wanted to come up with the models to model this. And uh, then he invented these random matrix models. So to try use the eigenvariable random matrix to model these, uh, uh, these, these spikes. And, uh, now it was, Actually, it was quite interesting. Was uh, was we gonna was start with random Schrodinger? He he, he start he want to use the random Schrodinger equation to uh, to model this, but he couldn't do it. And so then he he changed his switch idea to use random matrices because he can sort of compute uh, the probability law in some way. And then he made this broad, bold uh, hypothesis. He said that if you take a system which are highly correlated, then then they are. Uh, spectral statistics will be given by the same as a random matrix. This was a very bonus uh, you know, hypothesis or exhibition. And um, so then now, then we have a, you see for the Gaussian and Poisson, this is for independent events, and this would be an event for highly correlated events. So this was the comparison. But this comparison is not without, uh, um, uh, you know, without complaint and so, so because the vegan, uh, for the for the for these vegan matrices, the global the eigenvariant distribution are given by a semicircle. But then, so there were some complaints. Uh, George Ullenberg would say to Dyson that uh, so because the this the semicircle is completely wrong. So then, why why you believe the next order, which is uh, the the eigenvariant uh, this gap statistic? Then we talk about this gap statistic. Why it would be correct? So this was uh, the, the historical background. And uh, so I, in this talk, I will order the eigenvariant the decreasing order and with eigenvector. And then the, the standard uh, semicircle law of eigenvariants is given by a semicircle. And then you can even compute. So the key was, uh, the key was to compute the, the spacing uh, inside here. That you, if you can compute spacing statistics, and then this distance is one over n, and you want to draw up this one over n and want to understand the probability law here. And this was calculated by, uh, actually by Goldin, uh, and then uh, Meta and Dyson. And, and then it was connected to the Penave equation by Jim Romeo uh, Morisatos and his famous calculations. And later on was uh, this, at the edge was, he said edge also here was done by Tristan Williams. And they are explicitly, Formula, so, I'm not, so I will not want to list this here because uh, they're not related to this talk. But does the Jimbo work, uh, Jimbo Sato, does that occur at the edges or? No, it's in the center, it's in the ball. It's in the ball. It's in the ball. It's, 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 it's in the ball. Yes. And they, they, so the Tracy Williams sort of redid their work, but at the edge. What do you call highly correlated? What, <coughs> what does highly correlated mean? Oh, what is highly correlated? Uh, there's no definition. <laughs> <laughs> As a physicist, you, 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 because it's because it's a heavy, heavy nuclei. And so, so all these the neutrons, and they, they have a lot of interaction between each other. So imagine that everybody was in time with it, everyone in a very strong way. And this is more or less just a picture. It's not really. So I'm sorry that this talk has no number theory because I don't, <laughs> I don't know number theory. So I did talk about um, something I had I have worked on. All right. Uh, now, so the and then the the vegan and Dyson. Uh, this is called the vegan and Dyson beta conjecture. But really, the present method conjecture was meta. So meta in his book and he said that the, the I. The eigenvariant statistics, we call it bar statistics because we are talking about in the center. In the center of a statistic, the local statistics are independent of the probability law of the metric elements. And so roughly speaking, if you 
uh, if you if you blow up the local statistics, and so you fix the energy E, and then you, you look at the, in, in this neighborhood, you can find eigenvalue is uh, x, x i e plus x1 plus divided by n, the other one is x2 plus n. And then you want to say this probability law for your regular matrix and uh, the GOE, they are actually the same. So this was the, the, uh, the main task conjecture, really. And then we add the name of uh, Regan and Dyson because they, they sort of uh, has been working on this and talk about this. And, and Regan clearly, I think Meta clearly got this idea from this, this uh, Regan's grand vision. Right. Did Wigner have only in mind these mean field uh, types of models? I mean, these no, random matrices, or was he looking at more general form oh, systems? No, if you, if you I, I didn't read the uh, Wigner paper. It's, uh, uh, too much, but uh, what he said, a few sentences, uh, I, I read this. Uh, he was thinking he, he wanted to model this, uh, this, this nuclear interaction. That's really what he has in his mind. And then he believed that this, this nuclear interaction is so complicated. But because it's so complicated, there's nothing one can model it. But then, then he believed this random matrix model. Okay. <laughs> And what was he expecting the O E other than C B? Oh, no, this uh, depends on symmetry class, depending on the, the, the symmetry of the physical system, you would think G O E or G U, depending on the, the symmetries. And then the Dyson has a paper of uh, look at this, the symmetry and uh, classify this with this. Uh, okay, it means both on the no, 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 it is a time reversal type symmetry. And uh, so what do you mean by bulk? So oh, bulk means uh, bulk means uh, means here. From here to here, the bulk edge means here and here. By the way, a name that is not mentioned, which should be mentioned more, is Godin. Oh yes, Godin. Yeah, yeah, here, here. <laughs> My apologies. My eyesight is very good. Oh, you mean this this conjecture <laughs> Godin here? Okay. I, I think Meta learned it from Godin how to compute anything. Yes. All right. <laughs> uh, so, so this was, uh, and and then 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 uh, the reason the vegan uh, started to think about ensuring the equation was because uh, he was thinking about you know there are so many particles interacting with each other and because they have so much interaction so why not just just think about it's a random so this is his first try. but he couldn't solve the equation so then he went to random matrices. Was, was, uh, all right, so, uh, and now the next one is about uh, the eigen, eigenvector statistics. So, so the first one, of course, you call delocalizations, and uh, you just say that uh, the eigenvector, the eigenvector error infinity norm uh, is bounded by n to the minus one. I, I put the more epsilon because uh, they are more precise formulation, but roughly speaking, n to the minus one. And now, but then on the other hand, if you look at the, the orthogonal group, then you know the eigenvector distribution actually are given by the orthogonal group. It's uh, if in, the, in the case of GOEs by given by orthogonal group. Now, but then you ask yourself, now what about other ensembles and which is not, uh, which, which is not uh, uh, Gaussian, which is not a rotation invariant? So this is a, a very important question. And you will see that, and then, then uh, at the time we look at this, uh, we find that uh, Ludwig and Salak, and they already talk about this on the manifold. It's called a corner unit of cardicity, say the eigenvector, the eigenfunction are completely flat. And there are lots of uh, arithmetic work on this on this uh, arithmetic QE, but uh, uh, but I think we we will. Well, what's important for us is uh, this. Uh, statement uh, and definition. So then you ask yourself, now, what about in, in the probabilistic case? Um, uh, so then, then the statement, of course, is obviously you take eigenvectors and then you normalize it correctly and you want to say you, it's average. But now because in the test function, you can just take a, take a set as a test function. So you take a set. And now you, you look at uh, your eigenvector average on this set, and it's equal to one, and this is called the probabilistic QE. And there are other generalizations you can do in probability because now this is probability. You can also ask the essential limit theorem, 
over, over this statement because you just take a square root, it becomes actually zero. And uh, you can also ask joint distribution of several eigenvectors because this is just one eigenvector. You can ask for many. And you can also ask for the, you know, you can ask for L4 normal, different, different type things. There are many things you can ask. Um, so these are uh, the eigenvector statistics. Now, the next thing I want to introduce is uh, this uh, random regular graph. And this for people working on random graph, they, they like a lot of random graph. Well, for example, I want to, uh, uh, this is just take a simple D regular graph. D, mean, D regular means that each edge has, a, uh, each vertex has a D edges. And so, so this is a simple D. Called G and D is n vertex with uh, uh, D regular graph. It's a uniform distribution, probability distributions. Then you look at the adjacency matrices and then you normalize by square root D minus one. But this is uh, so normalization, I can't really, uh, it's, it's convenient for us to compare with, uh, with uh, a standard, uh, standard GOE. So we do these normalizations. And now the random D regular graph. It's very it's different from the from the vegan one. Uh, all these GOE is because they are highly correlated because you know each, each row, each column, they are only D of them are one, everything else is zero. So they are highly correlated. And so they have these correlations of this province. And, and also this uh, random D regular graph is a there's there's a very big eigenvalues. It's, uh, uh, you just take an eigenvector one, 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 you just take this one. So this is a trivial one. So but we are interested in the non-trivial one. So, all right. And uh, so similar, you can define this called early learning graph. Instead of, uh, instead of D is fixed, it's, uh, it's a probability. It, you, you, uh, you, you, know, you flip a coin and with a fixed probability P equal to D over N in order to, uh, to reach this uh, has an expected value of number of edges equal to D, but this is just expected one. It's, it's, uh, it's a probability. So that this one has a, this is early running graph is independent, so it's very nice because each edge it has chosen independently. On the other hand, it's, uh, uh, on the other hand, when D, when D is very small, it starts to become disconnected. And so there are some problems. There are some very different behavior once D is very small. So for very, very, um, very sparse matrices, some, a lot of time you want to look at D regular instead of the other uh, training. All right, so uh, now the next thing is, uh, is the random Schrodinger equations. And uh, uh, so random Schrodinger equation now, uh, so now, so people are familiar with this is uh, this, uh, there's a, there's a region called delocalization regions, and it's all the GOE statistics in the delocalization regions. And then there's a Poisson statistic with localization regions. And this was done, there are many, many works for Florida Spencer in this uh, first breakthrough, and Minami and Eisman Mochella gave a you know, beautiful proof. And they told the Bogen and Kanik, and, uh, and also the Dean the Smart, there are, they are, they are huge amount of literature here. Uh, so, so I don't, I don't want to give the precise condition why, uh, when this is correct, but the, the GOE statistics part, this part actually, there's, there's, there are almost no result here. Uh, the Bogen has some result with uh, this potential of these decreasing, but, uh, but this still, this is very, very far from the province. So, and um, now the end of the model, it's what we call the local model. This is critical model, it's local. Local means that this metric element is equal to zero unless X and Y are close. So in physics, when you, you have lattice and if it's near this neighbor or it's not too far away, it's called local model. All the physics models are local, but on the other hand, the GOE and GUE are completely, uh, it's mean to it. And then there's some parallel conjecture of this, but this I'm not going to say because this I have nothing. I just just mentioned it here. And uh, now, uh, so so now so these are the, the type of problems uh, we want to focus on these three lectures. And then the the key question, one of the key question to us is how comes this kind of random Schrodinger equations? 
and uh, can be modeled by, by the mean field? This is the key question uh, one to, I'm trying to ask. And uh, also along the way, also this theory, uh, this theory in the graphs. Okay. All right. So now, uh, so next we we'll talk about, oh, yes. So here, oh, yes. So I forgot this slide. And so this, uh, so question. So now if you ask yourself the question, now, why this, uh, why this random Schrodinger equations, the, the, the spectral statistics were given by, by this, uh, this GOE. The, the model is completely different. One is uh, the matrix is very, very you know, focused on the diagonal, the other one is everywhere. And uh, so I'm trying to answer this question uh, in the following way. I think this, uh, if you have a QE, the QE, the eigenvector, because the eigenvector become prime. So it turns this uh, local model becomes a mean field. That, that's the, so there's a picture. Yes. Okay. Can you explain what you mean by mean field? Uh, what, what do I mean by mean field? Uh, mean field is not, is not a well-defined. Heuristically. The, the, uh, the, the physicists like to say that uh, if, you, if everyone interacts with everyone else, it's called mean field. That's, that's more or less. If if every is if everyone in time with everyone else, then that's called mean field. But but the mean field, of course, is artificial because just like people see in this room, you are neighbors and so on. So you forget about all this structure. But we are in the graph, completely graph is, is a perfect example of mean field. Everyone just connect to everyone else. So so roughly speaking, so mean field was uh, when I was a student, I, I still remember people consider mean field was a trivial problem because you know the Q device is so easy, it's completely completely solve it. So the mean field usually is, is used to uh, as a solvable model because because if everyone in time with everyone else, just like a complete graph, it's much easier to compute. But then there's a question now: why the complete graph will, will tell you about when the derivative graph? You know, that's really, it's completely different. But of course, in this case, it's, it's completely wrong. But in, in this Vegas case, actually, what he claimed is uh, if you take this random Schrodinger equation, you write down the Hamiltonian as a matrix because the Laplace operator only connected to a few sites. And the other is diagonal, so it's only, you only see a few neighbors. So why this kind of model only see a few, a few neighbors? And the, the one that, like this complete this GOE that everyone see compared with everyone else, they have the same. I can have a statistic, so that's a question. All right, so, so I think that, so that, I, so, that uh, so this was, I think the QE will turn a local model into a medial one, because once your eigenvector is completely, is especially completely flat, so this, even though you are just interacting at one specific site, but actually it's just spread to everyone else. But then you will ask the other question, now why, why your system, by the local model, I can make the one to be completely flat. No question. And then the, the answer is, uh, I'm trying to say is that if you have a quantum diffusion, and this diffusion will, will turn the eigen, will make the product, the eigen vector become flat. And sort of, your system has a diffusion, you start, even you start from local, you start to spread. And once you spread enough, you become flat. So that's the, the picture. So, so this is the picture, all right. Now, uh, so here's the, here are some of the main results. And uh, uh, any questions? And how do you you skipped. You, you said that the, the diffusion gives you the QE. Yeah. And you said that the QE gives you the universality, but you skip the stability in the Dyson Bionic motion. Q. Okay, so this will give you the QE. QE, QE give you the eigen, this uh, Dyson Brownian motion, the eigenvalues are, are stable and you give you the size. So, what's your question? Okay, all right. Uh, anyway, I, I, will explain, I will explain more detail. Oh, yes. Uh, the the, con the contention for D bigger than three is correct. E bigger than three because the, the random walk and e bigger than three is transient and so so you don't have memory. But two, I don't know. But but right now our dimension what we can do is by 
might be pi. The conjecture is three, so the we we All right. So now the so now let's go back to this uh, uh, this vegan Dyson meta conjecture. It's, uh, if you uh, so we we. We, we prove that if the if the moments of, of the metric elements has four plus epsilon moments, then uh, then this conjecture holds. So and it's conjecture hold both in uh, in the box and at the edge. And um, and assumptions reduced uh, in the box. Oh, sorry. This, so in the box. So in the box, the assumption reduced to two plus epsilon is by by a paper of one more. And the, and then at the edge, uh, the the D, uh, the D and the in, and uh, actually uh, the D was also. Can I ask a question there, going back. Uh, your proof reduces it. You you show that the central limit type theorem that this will converge to something which then converges to GOE. Do you have a new computation? You don't. No, I don't have. Nobody has a new computation. Nobody has a new computation. That's right. So that's why I keep on mentioning Gordon because he's. Really yes. Yes. So you 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 are showing it's universal, and then it says yes. somebody has to make a computation in a specific case. So and you, you reduce it to GOE or GUE. Yes, that's yes. what, that's what Peter said. So all, all we did it was was a reduction. And these methods of supersymmetry of a feet off they're not rigorous as far as oh the supersymmetry was was rigorous. Was was rigorous computation? It, it gave it give you the answer of sine kernel, so okay. that's not a problem. So the G, actually, I was wrong. The G, the super symmetry gave you the correct calculation. It's the correct answer. That's another calculation. Yes, <laughs> But uh, now uh, it's true that uh, I think Zeran Bauer showed how to compute it in a, an exact model. But if the fact that physicists claim it much more generally is not rigorous. That's right. No, proof. Oh, proof. But, uh, okay. yeah. oh, that's, that's what rigorous means. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we, we, we look at the Shiva Sandwich method and we try to repeat the, 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 the GOE computation case. And, uh, and then we couldn't change any Gaussian assumption anywhere with even. Yeah, right, right, right. Then it's very rich. Okay, so, right. So, uh, and then the the D and E at the edge, they prove that they prove a sharp condition. The edge exact uh, exact transition line where, where it was it's correct. It's four minus epsilon. All right. And so uh, in all these results, we we also get complete localization of all the eigenvectors by product of the proof. And uh, and then there are so there there are also a lot of other, other works and the extension and so on. <laughs> and. Uh, and then there are many works uh, with uh, uh, different cases and uh, with all my all these uh, very energetic uh, young people. And Tao and Wu has some partial result, and there are many look at the complex case. In the real case, uh, their result is quite limited. So, all right. Okay. And now, um, but then the. Uh, the, the two plus epsilon in the bulk is not really the, the transition line because uh, you can actually even go low. And this was due to a conjecture by, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's TBT conjecture, I think. And uh, so it was first, it was first conjectured by these two, uh, but uh, it was, it was, I think the conjecture was wrong and uh, this one was got the correct answer. So this has to do with the tails of the, of the independent yes. random variable. Yes. So, so you, you can think roughly speaking, you can think about it, suppose x bigger than k is roughly like a k to the oh, minus, 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 minus sign. Uh, <laughs> I would fail my exam. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> minus. I, I meant to type minus alpha, but I type a minus here. Stay in line. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's k to the minus alpha, and uh, um, and then you can see that. So now that the forget about these these detailed readings, but the main result is that if you below two here, you can go all the way down to one. And once you below one, then there's uh, there's a line we can prove it. inside here. You still got GOE and uh, and the delocalization. 
And but the conjecture is there's there's a precise there's a precise matrix is in line here, but but nobody come even anywhere close to here. So the green is done. Yeah, green is done. Green green is all here. And actually, the 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 eigenvector behavior was uh, was done by uh, by Amo and and the Patrick. They 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 did they continue and work quite a lot. They know a lot about eigenvector behavior. So, uh, and now about eigenvector distributions. Eigenvector distribution, uh, so this was the work of um, part, it's about eight years. And uh, so what we prove is uh, if you take eigenvector uh, and uh, in, in the block, and now you look at the joint probability distribution in the sense that you look at the test function, you, you, take, eigen, you take an eigenvector, you take k eigenvector, and now you choose the k vector, and you look at the inner product because you project to finite dimensional space. So if you project to finite dimensional space, if you compute a Wigner and compute with the GOE, the probability distribution of the set. So so you look what is you can you can think about this uh, for any k eigen eigenvector, the finite dimensional distributions uh, are the same as the orthogonal group. So that's a state. And, and and if you have this one, you, you also know the quantum unit ergodicity is correct, in, um, and also with high probabilities. And then the, the recent work by uh, Benick and Lapato, uh, La and also um, uh, so they proved that the central limit theorem is over this, uh, uh, the QE is also correct. And but these, these two results actually is they. This did not imply this, and this did not imply this either. So because, because this will only talk about one eigenvector, and it's only about in, it's uh, also in, only in L2 norm. And this talk about many eigenvectors, but they did not really look at their, their average. Be, their, if you take some of them, whether they have a cancellation, did not look at them. So these are not, uh, these are independent. I mean, the result, one did not include the other one. And, and I also mentioned that, so, uh, so there are lots of, so eigenvector is a different behavior, not always so, so straightforward. Uh, in the early journey graph, in the very sparse case, uh, they are also has different behavior. And also this Levy matrix I mentioned, they also did a lot of uh, uh, analysis has different behavior. So when you say sparse graphs, you mean P over M goes to log, log, uh, log N. Okay. <laughs> so uh, in the law case, because these start to uh, this early journey, this early journey graph start to become different. But the theory about the sparse case. Hmm? Uh, the sparse case. Uh, I have a question about the sparse case. Uh, do you actually uh, these results assume uh, randomness or just uh, if the underlying uh, uh, sparsity has the form of an expander graph. You still get similar results. So it, I think they, they assume the assume the the whole probability behavior. It's uh, it's not uh, not just this, but you cannot just assume that uh, very little probability. Everything it has to be independent early Schrödinger graph. Okay. All right. So. Uh, and now for a random Dirichlet graph, uh, so so let me mention what's the result. So you want to prove that you converge to the Kasten McKay probability distributions because now this is not same as going to become like this. And uh, uh, so uh, maybe Peter should give this talk here about this part here. He said they define this Ramanujan uh, uh, graph with uh, this eigenvalue less than equal to two. Uh, so they are. They are resolved by using this interlacing polynomial to cut through constructions. And uh, um, much more recently. And so, so, the, so the, the key one key question is to understand the, uh, the, all these eigen, eigen value to be less than two. And, and then there was this, uh, I think this was uh, Peter's student that did some simulations about the. Uh, uh, this will come to Tracy Whedon, but there's uh, some subtraction, you make some subtraction. Uh, Square this, there's a subtraction, is constant, it's, uh, I, I don't know, I think it's still up to detail, I guess. So, 
I think the Tracy Willem was not defined as a, as a fluctuation, because there's a built in mean. So it took a while to make the numerics look right. They had to put in the right, the right, uh, uh, it's skewed and it's yeah. true. Yeah, but yes, but uh, but I think it's, so. So there's no interpret interpretation where this yeah. constant come from. <coughs> so uh, so this is what we can do in the in the random deregular graph case. We can prove the casting Michaelo all the way up to d equal to three. By the way, I have a bet with Noga on whether the random graph is Ramanujan. Yes. Are you on my side? I hope. Right. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> uh, so the case then Michaelo we prove is up to uh, up to this uh, the scale log n divided by n. So I mean if you so I will explain this up to this scale. What does this mean? But this uh, the case then Michaelo was correct up to uh, the value of three, and the eigenvector completely localized, and uh, and also uh, we prove the the eigenvalues uh, is, is two plus this. Oh, I, I forgot. I should mention that there were there was a previous there was famous result that uh, this error term is uh, some log n, and uh, so we improve this to n we might c, and but unfortunately we uh, we are trying to improve the c, correct? And on the other hand, if you slightly uh, increase the d once it's bigger than n to the epsilon. Then we can get all the parking universality and uh, probably QE, everything hold. And in addition, we also prove the, the second the, the eigenvalues. If you scale correctly, it will come to a Tracy Whedon. And uh, this is for the random deregular graph. And then the parallel result also true for the early random graph. This was there also, uh, I mean, this was that was done with uh, Jiao Yang Huang and uh, uh, the, I think the most recent one, there are some of these results is, is still on, is, is, um, the preprint has not appeared, but uh, it should be in a few weeks. And, and there are also lots of other, this was so lots of work with uh, all my previous students, and they also have some independent results, but at the end, this is the final push. So are you still trying to get improvements on this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we also go to entry epsilon to DB. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I just give you a I'm getting close. <laughs> I just I, I, all I'm trying to convince you is uh, if you look at this one, then you start to believe that if we want to go down to to D final, it's possible. It, it looks it looks there's some chance, but it was that. I mean, it looks there's a hope to, to go down to, to smaller one. Right? So it's quite it's a bit technically explained, but uh, anyway. All right, so. Uh, so these are the previous results, and uh, the famous one by, by Friedman has this uh, log estimate, which was improved. And now if you look at the, the case in Michaelo, uh, if you look at the, the, the scale they can prove was, was, uh, was quite large. And anyway, all right, so, so I think I don't want to spend too much time on this comparison. And, and now, so now let's start with random, random band match. Well, uh, so, so the random sharing equation, actually this was uh, uh, a problem. I was a postdoc at the Institute here, and I was also postdoc with Michael. Both Tom and Michael asked me to do it, and I, uh, I still have, I only make the, uh, I only wrote a few papers about it, but it's been in my mind for more than 25 years. And, uh, this was come back to the time I was postdoc with him. So now the, the difference between the band matrix and the real matrix. Uh, now in the, when we when we look at matrix, we only look at the, the matrix index i and j. So matrix index i and j. But now you want to think about it, the, the matrix index i and j are changed to a lattice site on, on the on the d-dimensional lattice. So for example, in, in one dimension, it's quite easy because here you just you just interact with your neighbors. But in two dimensions, your i and j are really the x and y of the lattice in three dimensions like this. So you want to think about in two dimensions. So each, each index i actually is, is, uh, is a lattice side x. And now you look at the, you look at the, you still have mean zero conditions, but now you, you change your variance, your variance to be decided by, 
uh, by a, a, you know, a function of Schwartz class. I mean, you can also just take a sharp a constant. So, so the variance is a profile called SXY. This SXY is, uh, is there. Uh, it's there, there, the variance of the metric element. So roughly speaking, your metric if you has, has some widths and otherwise everything else is zero. So the idea was that you want to shrink these widths to become smaller and smaller, and then it starts to become more and more look like a random, uh, random Schrodinger equation. So that's the idea. So physicists believe that uh, this was the, uh, you know, this was some easier model than the random Schrodinger equation. And actually, I think Tom wrote uh, a new article about this, and we look at this because uh, Tom has mentioned so many times that uh, this is the model what you look at. So, so we look at these models, and this is random band matrix, and this is sort of a toy model for the random Schrodinger equation. And uh, um, you want to say that that picture that you have there's only one, only for one dimension. Right? This is, yes, this is this is one dimensional picture. This yeah, one you is can't draw that picture. Right. This one is one dimensional, <sighs> but I, I can't draw two dimensional. <laughs> you know, two dimensional, it's uh, you need imagination. Right. From your point of view, the fact that one dimension doesn't have Anderson uh, does have Anderson localization sort of simply because it's from Furstenberg. Is that ever? Oh, one dimension is lots of results. Actually, one dimension problem is uh, much more understood. Yeah, right. So I'm saying, but from your point of view, Furstenberg's product of random matrices is not a tool, right? No, no, no. We we never look at product of random matrices. That's uh, that's transfer matrix. See, the transfer matrix because in high dimension it's very different. yeah, right. Of course, it does. All right. So so this is what well, this is our result, and I think the most recent one. Uh, so the there are two there were two papers on the, on the archive and the last one we are writing it now probably is still about yeah there are still a few weeks uh, until you appear so now here's the conclusion the conclusion is uh, so now if you look at the condition it changed from the last time I gave this talk the dimension was decreased to seven I probably don't care but uh, anyway actually I'm a bit confused. The exact definition of a random band matrix in higher dimensions yes. is to take, replace the Laplacian by something which is localized at some distance w, is that right? Oh, in, 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 the, in the D dimension, you know, I think if you take a, if you have a lattice of, you take a D dimension of Q. Okay. And you take a periodic D dimension of Q. And now you choose the distance w. Yeah. And this is, this distance w, uh, it's, uh, it's something large, but, uh, but growing it as a function yeah. of the cube. Yes. And then, then you, you, you look at your, your metric element. If you label the metric element by H, X, Y, now you find that only X and Y at, at distance W, less than W. It's like supported. Okay. That's the picture. Okay. And it's supposed to be Gaussian or not? Supposed to be Gaussian or not? Oh. Uh, we we uh, it doesn't have to be Gaussian, and uh, I think we we actually even though our proof is written for Gaussian, but uh, in a non-Gaussian case, uh, uh, the, the, the the expansion will be more complicated, but, but not intrinsically. This is not an intrinsic difficulty. Okay, all right. So so now you uh. So how we prove is if you take a green function square, and remember it's, it's quite strange, it's the absolute value of green function square. And then you look at the x, y, then you find that it's Fourier transform. It's called like a p square. Here is a p square, and there's a diffusion coefficient matrix here. So I, I, I wrote the theorem in, in, the, in the Fourier transform, but you can also think about it in position space, but it's easier to explain this in there. Fourier spaces. But maybe you should just write down what the green spots you mean by the green function, right? Oh, I, yeah. I, oh, I haven't defined what no. the green function is. Oh, <laughs> this is a problem. You have a blackboard. <laughs> so I can't want to use it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, the, so the green function is uh, xy equal to h. And that is your matrix. So and that you might see. So this is a green function. And so what we consider this green function absolute value square. 
adapting this equation. So I think it's, it's a resolvent. You take your, your random matrix by C, and uh, and then you compute its inverse. That's important that Z has an imaginary part, right? And Z is uh, Z is E plus I A, and the A is part of I A. Sorry. So this is what I, I forgot to say. So, uh, you know, this is it. You, so you expect that at a lower dimension, the formula is not true, right? Uh, I expect that uh, dimension, dimension one, uh, well, dimension one is localized if you take a random shoring. So, but so, the, so you expect uh, in, the, in the Indian world, you, you should be able to prove this for three billion the two. You know what? I mean, you expect the, I mean, you get bigger than the seven. The, the optimal result. Oh, the optimal result is for the optimal result. Uh, Why? Well, I'm not sure this is optimal, but if I d bigger than C and W is bigger than some constant fixed, then you expect everything is correct. So, uh, but what I want to emphasize is uh, what I want to emphasize is uh, it's actually you have to look at the square. You can do the absolute value square, and the absolute value square. So, so this is kind of, if you if you work on uh, Schrodinger equation, then the, the green point square is natural because the, all the physical observable is in terms of wave function square. So, so that's a natural natural object. On the other hand, uh, if you well, do you see uh, the z or the e in this? Uh... Oh yeah, the green function is. Uh, in function is gx, y, z. And, and there, I, I see the eta, but I don't see the e. You don't see the eta, you don't see the e. Z is equal to e plus i eta. So it's in the d. Oh, it's in the d. What was the z? In the, the d is, is it dependent. Oh, I see, I see. D, d, d. All right. So our diffusion coefficient is uh, we, actually we can, we it, it, it's there's this there's, there's, there's series expansions and then there's the first term which is uh, quite easy to compute, but then uh, not exact and then there are there, there's, there's a power series in terms of decreasing orders. I, I will I will explain later on why how how does one get this this result. And also we also prove that uh, uh, the QE also holds in high probability in the sense that. If you take a lens, it's bigger than L2 is 15 divided by D. By the way, here I need W equal to L2 is delta. I, I, should, I should emphasize this. Because I the, the conjecture is for W is large enough, but we couldn't quite do that. We can do the W is L2 with any power, but this delta is, can be any arbitrary small fix. So, so we prove the QE hold in the sense that uh, uh, if you take a length scale bigger than L3 15 divided by D, so you, you know that we have to go to quite high dimension, otherwise the stem is empty. So in high enough dimension and uh, in the bulk, then this statement is correct. And the QE statement is correct. So if you, if you go in high enough dimension, you take Q large size, large enough, then you expect that you up, the upper average, the eigenvector are completely flat. Around the box of size L? Yes, box of size is L. So the, the original. Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, so you, the statement is like this. So you take the size like this. This size, so this original part is size L. And now you take a box size L. Mm -hmm. And then after average, the eigenvector are flat. It's a state. So this is high enough that we know. And, uh, and you can see that we are, we are getting weaker and weaker if we want stronger and stronger statement. And then uh, you now this one is a delocalization hold in the sense of uh, it's L3 phi minus D. So it's not quite, it's, you, you want to L3 minus D, but uh, we have factor five we couldn't get rid of. So uh, the optimal one is uh, L3 minus D. This is the L2 because you, the eigenvector uh, uh, L2 normalized. So, so 
you know, minus d is the optimal one, but we cannot get an optimal one. There's a factor here. So the conjecture is? It's L3 minus d plus f. Your notation leaves room for d to be non-diagonal. Do you mean that? D could be? Non-diagonal. D? Oh, this d. one? D, yeah. Oh, it's not diagonal. Not diagonal. Yeah, I see, it's not. And then the last statement, this one is, uh, this, this is, uh, you can see this is, uh, we sort of try to get some result. So this one, the dimension actually, uh, so, so it's C divided by delta. This is not epsilon, this is this delta. So if, if dimension is bigger than C divided by delta, then we can prove the bulk universality. So the bulk universality here, this is the, actually, this theorem, the dimension requirement is, is, uh, is a, it's the strongest in this, in this one. So we, we can only prove that dimension is high enough depending on this delta. So but then you'll get the GOE statistic? Yes, then you'll get GOE statistics. Because your dimension has to be. Yeah. Big, so. Yeah. So, so I just want to try to, uh, try to find a case that uh, I can complete the story of the stuff of quantum diffusion up to the authority. And then we find that dimension has to be keep on increasing because uh, once you, you, you're asking the more and more refined properties. Yeah. Right. Okay, so uh, so now so now I have five minutes to give you the proof. <laughs> uh, so now I give you a proof. Uh, this is a general proof of universality. So now uh, I can only do this for the uh, for proof essential limit theory. Uh, so now here here I give a proof essential limit theory. And uh, using and proof, I didn't understand for what uh, for a case you're talking about here. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I want to prove a central limit here. Okay, for well, ID random variable. <laughs> so, so everybody knows the, uh, the central limit here, but here I want to prove it using the Einstein movement process. You find this is completely crazy uh, in a way it is. So, I think I construct this model just to construct this proof to explain our idea. So you look at Einstein Hulenberg process. This is dxi equal to Brownian motion, and this is sub minus one half xi. So this is Einstein Hulenberg. So this one has a Gaussian as invariant measures. Okay. So now I want to prove the essential limit theorem, and then the first one, first one I prove, first one is a trivial a priori estimate. So you you know this this uh, xi zero cannot be too big, right? Otherwise, this is a small probability because I I don't want to have uh, some Random variable is, uh, is exponential n, and that's uh, of course not it works. And now the second step is uh, uh, you want to prove that the Einstein Hulenberg process converges to Gaussian. If Einstein, each one Einstein Hulenberg process converges to Gaussian with time, time bigger than one. You can prove that Einstein Hulenberg process for time bigger than one, it becomes Gaussian. Okay? So this one is not a problem. So you know that if I, if I look at this, if I look at this dynamics and I look at x1 t plus x n t divided by square n, because each one is already go to the Gaussian as t bigger than well, of course, there's some measure divided by square n is also Gaussian. So, so a Gaussianity of the Onsen Ulrich process is used here. If the Onsen Ulrich process is garlic, then, then you know that as t becomes large enough, then this becomes a Gaussian. And now you need a third step. The third step is to say that uh, if you look at the the eigenvalues, if you look at the, 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 the central limit theorem, like this average of ID random variable divided by square root n, their probability distribution is not going to change much in the time from zero to one. Right? Because now I already explained that we already know that if the time, if you run this Brownian motion, as time much bigger than one, then you know it's already Gaussian. And if I, can, if I can show that from time zero to one, it will stay, uh, the change is not very much, then I prove it. Okay, so now how, how do I prove that uh, uh, it will not change very much? I take a test functions and consider the, the average x1 plus xn divided by square root n, and then I will compute this at time t and minus the same thing at time equals zero. And I use the Ito calculus and I differentiate this one, and I want to say that this guy is small. So this is obvious. And now, if you compare Ito calculus, if you if you done Ito calculus, then you know that Ito calculus always uh, at the end always go to the second derivative term. And the second derivative term, 
I will spare you with all this, with some minor calculation is it's actually one minus xj squared here. So if you compute this zero character, you have one minus xj squared. And now, now you see that if the, if the xj squared variance equal to one, or, or, you, or you don't even need this each one equal to one, you only need the average summation over j equal to one, then this term vanishes, and then the next term is entry minus one half times t. So why you get an entry minus one half? Because you're squaring the n. If you differentiate once, twice, you get one over n here. But one over n, you have n terms. So n terms and one over n cancel exactly. So here you need the variance go to one. And the next one is entry minus three half. But entry minus three half, you have an n term, so it's entry minus one times t. So you know that the second order term cancel, and the third order term is entry minus one times t. So as long as your t is less than entry one half, then this is vanishes. So now you, you prove the essential limitation because, uh, because you know the time bigger than one is already by the Gaussian already reached the Gaussian. And on the other hand, you also know that if t is less than entry one half, it doesn't change. And so these two put together is proven. No, I don't understand that. I mean, time is much large, larger there. Time is going. So, so this is the. So the idea is the following. So I think this is the. So what I say is, uh, if you take a time t from here, from zero, square root n. So this part, the probability law does not change. No change. So that's this step. Okay. 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 Yes. On the other hand, from the Gaudicity, I know that if this is a big O of one, this part is Gauss. And so I just choose the time anyway in here, then it's finished. So that's the idea of proving the of course, I mean, you will never prove a steel statue limitation in this way because this requires little character, which requires a little bit process. It's just really crazy. So you will never do that for the, for the CLT. But in the random matrix, oh, okay. in the random matrix, oh, no, I, I don't have time, so I didn't. And you, apply, matrix, and you apply to this Dyson Brownian yes, motion, right? That's right. What's E flow mean? What's e -flow? Previous slide, there's something called E flow. Oh, E flow is eigenvector flow. Uh, so, so in the case of eigenvalue, I run the Dyson Brown motion. In the case of eigenvector, I run the E flow, which is eigenvector flow. Okay. And then, then I prove the then I then I prove the agonicity of uh, of these two, and then uh, I do the stability. And that's, that's the story. So, so next talk. Uh, so I, the proof is still the way it was a few years ago. The basic. Proof. Uh, yeah, it's the proof was uh, the band matrix proof is, is almost completely different. Oh. The random band matrix proof is good. And on the other hand, well, eigenvariant eigenvector. So uh, eigenvector flow. Now we can do the eigenvector flow for the for the multi uh, uh, for the for the many eigenvectors. And for the many eigenvectors, I, I'm very happy that I find the I find the proof in the uh, in mesh paper. It's the appendix by Stein. And there was the idea is used. So I will explain to you next time why the why a comment by Stein has become quite useful here. Okay. All right. So, so I'll do this next time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Are there some questions or comments? Is any of these things depend on the periodic boundary condition that you chose? So, yes, for the band measure, yes. Everything else is no. For the band measure, yes. We use translation variance. So if the translation translation invariance is broken, I, I can't do it because then I, I will not be able to see that uh, when we use the, the translation invariance for, for some case of Asia. I think this was uh, very, it's a key question. I don't know the answer. I think the phenomenon is correct, but we can come to it. So in, in Dyson, there's a threefold way, and you, you talk about GOE, there's GUE, I'm sure that you've done that as well. How about GSE? Have you, have you done that? 
Yeah. Uh, I think they are, they are all the same. Actually, the analysis is the hardest. For the Dyson Brown emotion, all the analysis are the most difficult in beta equal to one. So yeah. GO is the hardest case. Okay, but you've done all okay. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we can do the beta is not integer. Beta is bigger than equal to one. But you do any beta? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, the beta. The, that's, that, that's the unitary invariant case, right? Yes. Well, yes. Now, you're not doing, you're saying you can do beta one, two, and four, but you can also do any other beta? Well, we, yeah, we are analysts. We... <laughs> <laughs> then, but, but then you don't know what the answer is. Actually, then the answer is universal, but you have no idea what it is. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <now. laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that really answers my first question. You only show that, that there's only one answer, but other than that, I know nothing. That's right. Except if somebody computed it with that, yes. one, two, and four. I can tell you they're all the same. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes? So I don't know if this question makes sense, but if you look at the Dyson Brown in motion, you have like the diffusion term and the drift term. And you want to say that the lambda is are kind of invariant under the this flow. Yes. And my question is, I guess you cannot do a triangle inequality saying each of them is it separately, each of them is small, and therefore I kind of keep the local statistics. You need to do something, I guess, much more sophisticated, saying if the Brownian motion kind of moves an eigenvalue by diffusion, that then the drift term pushes it back to where it was, yeah. or something like that? Uh, so there are various ideas. One idea is using a log solving inequality. And then that's a mixed, uh, mixed uh, the drift term with uh, Brownian motion. But the other idea we use is uh, using the coupling, or look at the tangent flow. If you want to use the coupling tangent flow, the, the Brownian motion will disappear, and then it's purely look at this object. But, but my point is, like, if you only had the diffusion term, then it just wouldn't be correct. You know, always, I think the, the key term is that is this is a drift term, it's not a diffusion. Ah, so, okay. It's the, the opposite. You can actually ignore the diffusion term. Because, That's right. Because, okay, so I'm missing something because it seems like it's order one over root n, which yes. means that it completely ruins the local statistics. Because uh, the distance between eigenvalues is much smaller. Yes, the, the, this, the distance between eigenvalues is one over n. So this term is actually uh, quite large. Uh, uh, this is much larger. It's incredibly large. <laughs> but, but even only the first one is, I, yeah, I see why the second one is much larger. But even only the first one is completely like breaking all the local That's right. statistics. That's right. This, this one, this one, the diffusion was sort of pushed in the power. Right. It's, not, it's not a good idea. That's right. You know, in the beginning, when we look at this problem, the reason people don't look at this problem too much is because this singularity is so the distance between eigenvalues one of and so this term is incredibly huge. And, uh, and then it looks like almost completely whole. But actually, but the, if you use in the right way, actually help this term actually help. Because like there is a cancellation between the no, it's not cancellation. It's actually right in the left. So the convex drive this thing. In the rigidity, it showing that it's not bigger than one over. Oh, but the uh, uh, rigidity uh, says uh, uh, it is n squared, and one over n basically. But one of it, but sometimes yes, you know, some probably some it's some smaller probably become smaller. But that's very rare. Uh, very rare. I guess it could be. Just want to mention that the, the second order term has a coefficient to the overlap of the functions, and that's the difference between the extended state versus localized states. Yes. And also, the, I guess you can see the eigenvector is it's, uh, it's even more. But anyway, I'll, I'll explain more of this next. Time. And uh, by the way, the idea is to, that the band match only in the third like, uh, Yeah, third, yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much.